This guy's name's Steve as well. Anyway, he's trying out different seats too. What was that good seat you had? SM... SMP. SMP. Yeah, that, was, that was Stella. Stella. Yeah. <coughs> this is one of this is a Shimano company called Pro. They're only thirty dollars from Merlin. Oh, okay. Turns, turns out once again the cheapest, <laughs> the cheapest yeah. seats. Yeah. Yeah. So Steve's tried some expensive seats as well, and he's finding that some of the cheaper ones are more comfortable. So he's tried. How many you tried so far? About four. <laughs> no, I've got about. Oh. <laughs> I've got about eight. Eight. Saddles. Oh, you're as bad as me. He's tried eight saddles. Goodness. Over two years. Over two years. Anyway, so there you go. So someone else trying out all different saddles to find find that some of the cheaper ones fit better than the more expensive ones. Sorry about all the wind noise. I'll tell you what I said anyway. I just got back home from the ride. Now the ride we did this morning there was mostly flat, about 72 k's. It was only about 240 meters climbing, that's all. So it was mostly sitting on the saddle, so it was a great test. Flat rides are always a good test for how comfy your saddle is. So this one, I found, because it's got so much cushion on there, about the same comfort-wise as this one. Of course, this one is about 35 grams heavier than this, and it doesn't look as good as this one. This one looks much more racy than that one. This just looks like an ordinary cheap seat, which it is. But the other thing that I found is because of so much cushioning on that, so much density in foam, it felt like I was having a, had an elastoma in the seat post for suspension, or I've gone from 25C tyres to 28 and gone down 10 pounds pressure. So, really good. It was absorbing all the shock of the road. So, I found that really nice. Now, if I had a choice, if that wasn't looking so horrible, if that looked like that, I would have that seat on there, no problems at all. So, really, really nice. I like that very much. Now, the other thing is, um, it's got some staples underneath and some screws at the back to hold the... Uh, plastic outside skin on so that's not too bad I don't really like the idea of staples but mm, on some some seats the staples come out on some they don't so much in a muchness but see that's the thing with the cheap seats how long do they last they might only last about a thousand kilometers and then they start splitting or the staples come out or they go out of shape or something that's the only problem with a cheap seat you need to ride it for a couple of thousand k's to see if it's really really good but other than that I really like this seat for $14, goodness me, can't really go wrong there. Looking at the seat itself, they all have pretty much this pear shape, so wider at the back and skinnier up at the front there. And the shape of the seat is dictated by what's underneath this plastic, it's called the shell, sometimes made of carbon fibre as well. So the whole shape and comfort of your saddle is dictated by the shell. Now the seat's divided into two sections, the body of the seat here I've cut one in half, the body or the back of the seat here and the nose or the horn of the seat at the front. And this whole shell here or seat part is suspended between three points here on the rails. Now there's a difference between men's and women's seats Yes, indeed, there is. So here we have a woman's specific seat and a men's seat. So there are differences. The woman's seat is wider in the body here at the back, slightly wider on the nose as well. It's also shorter, as you can see. Usually they're shorter, like that. There you go, that's the men's. And they're also a little bit rounder as well, overall shape that way, just a little bit rounder as well. So woman and men's specific shells. Now to determine what width of saddle is going to suit you best. The way to do that is first of all ask what style of riding are you doing? Are you doing triathlon and time trialing where your front is very low and your back is very flat to the ground? Maybe doing racing where you're still very low at the front but you've got a slight arch in your back. Maybe you're doing sports riding, not so aggressive so you're a little bit more upright. Maybe doing recreation where you're quite upright. Maybe doing casual where you're very upright. So this will determine where the pressure area is on your seat. So imagine that you do this with your fingers and this is the rami of your pubic area and the ends of your fingers are your sit bones on your buttocks. So your sit bones sit on the seat here like that. Put your fingers on there. So there's your sit bones. And the more aggressive riding you're doing, then the further down those fingers become. So 
the ram eye is sitting on your seat if you're very very aggressive like that and as you come up in the riding so racing sports recreation then you become more and more upright like that and more pressure goes on the back on your sit bones and less on the transition area of the seat so now what's more important of course is to measure we're all sitting on our sit bones regardless is how do you measure your sit bones or your tuberosity width very simple all you really need to do is get some of this aluminium mouth or paper and some sort of a knee high seat or stool where you can sit on maybe some steps in your house and a mat a mat or a piece of carpet so with your seat get your rug or mat and just put it on there to the edge then about a foot and foot and a half of aluminium alpha like that about that size and put it the same the front all the way to the front make sure it's not too wrinkly fairly smooth and just sit on it don't use cycling shorts just use a thin pair of ordinary pants or shorts sit straight down either hold the sides or the back and lift your legs up and you'll feel your bones will be pressing down just rock a little bit and that will put dents in the aluminium alfoil you get up and you'll see two definite imprints so now just draw around the outside of them approximately there and there and draw a dot in the middle like a pair of eyes now just measure to those dots and I'm about oh pretty much smack on 115 millimeters so now you've got the width of your equal tuberosities or your sit bones and that's where they sit on the seat apart so let's just say that you're the same as me 115 millimeters so they sit 115 mils apart now you need to add the increments so for me i'm going to go between racing and sports so be cheeky and go between the one and two centimeters so what's that 15 millimeters so you add 15 millimeters on one side and 15 millimeters on the other side so 30 overall 115 plus 30 is 145 so I'm in the ballpark of looking for my ideal width of seat at 145 so what's your width next thing to consider is how flat or how rounded is your saddle shape so for instance these two saddles here are going to feel completely different than each other even though they're exactly the same width this one here is a lot flatter and this one's a lot rounder look at this one here on the top it's very flat and then all of a sudden it just suddenly drops off on the edge there so it's got a lot larger flat area a lot wider flat area before it drops off this one here is quite round on top and it keeps going round and round and round all the way so it's very gentle and round almost all the way around and it's the same on the noses if you look at this one here again this one's flat on the nose and it suddenly drops off on the edges and this one is a lot more rounder on the nose so for that reason these are going to feel completely different it's also another reason it's called a transition zone or transition area between the seat area here and the nose you note this curve here this curve is quite sharp it just happens really quickly whereas this one is very slow curve like that so it almost looks like this one has a really long nose and this one is shorter but it's not it's just that curve is quick on this one and slow on that one so if you've got larger inner muscles inner thigh muscles you might find your legs will touch and rub on this one here whereas this one here leaves that quick quickly comes in and allows for that so different shapes even though they are the same width they're going to feel different the other thing to consider is the shape of the seat from back to front there are two basic sorts a wave or an s shape where it's high at the back comes down in the middle then comes back up at the nose and then tapers off down at the tip so that's called the s or the wave shape the other one is a flat just a dead flat shape so if for instance 
you're a triathlete or a hill climber and you like to just sit in one spot on your seat and push almost push back into the tail of the seat then you might favor that s or wave shape where you can sit in that indentation if you're moving around a lot on your seat you like to sit a bit forward for cadence or sit back here or whatever you want to do you're wiggling around a lot on your seat on your drops up here down so you favor the whole seat area then you might like a flat profiled seat the other thing to consider too is when you get your seat and you sit on your seat it might look flat but when you sit on there there's a fair bit of weight and the flex of the seat changes the shape so what might start off as a relatively flat seat and you sit on it it goes into an s or a wave shaped seat so some seats are worse than others here's one here for instance it's very flexy so here's the rail and you press down and what happens is, look at that there's a lot of flex there so this seat looking fairly flat actually when you sit on it goes into an s shape another sort of seat might be this one here where it's got up at the back a little bit flat and it's got a little bit of a wave to it but it's very hard it's very a non-flexy shell it's carbon fiber and when you press on it it's almost negligible <laughs> can hardly press it so it doesn't change shape much at all so that's the other thing to consider is the flexibility of the shell itself will change the shape next is the perennial relief channel or cutout this one has the cutout big hole there as you can see and this seat here has just the channel there's no cut out it's just the indentation either way it has a similar effect in that it relieves the pressure in the perineum area where there's a lot of nerves and blood vessels going through and dissipates that pressure to the uh, rami and the ichial tuberosity area so some people find that really really good and necessary and others don't for instance uh, some people say that they feel the edging here on the cutout rather than they'd rather have a solid filled in seat or maybe just a very shallow channel so it's not for everybody but nevertheless it's available if you uh, would require it the other thing is um, these channels in the hot weather provides a bit of air conditioning for your perineum but in winter it can give you a chill it can be very very cold so there's some pluses and minuses of the perineum relief channels and cutouts padding now I've cut this seat in half so you can see the padding in the seat now it's usually most seats have got polyurethane foam in them some have no padding like that if you like that well fair enough but most seats have got some sort of foam in them and some have different densities some have uh, soft foam and some have hard foam and some have got multi densities foam in them now what's important is what's called spring back it's important for a, a saddle to be able to move a little bit and then springs back into shape so not too plush and not too hard now the cheap ones quite often you find cheap foam will compress and over time it will just lose its shape and lose its density and will go out of shape so now is more foam better so if you have a nice plush seat lots of foam and as you sit on it, it because it's so soft it moves right down compresses and it might distribute your weight it might feel nice for about 30 40 kilometers but then after that it'll start feeling uncomfortable and why it's because it starts to form what's called pinch points so at certain points you'll feel rubbing and chafing and it'll certainly be uncomfortable so don't get a seat that's got too much padding so for short term riding that might be okay but not for long term now the good compromise the good saddle usually has padding but it's quite firm so don't go to a saddle and say oh there's hardly any padding in there because it might be just really really firm quite dense padding um, but that means if you get the shape right for you it'll be really really good for long rides now you can also get gel seats or a combination of gel and foam which is initially very comfortable but gel has a reputation of going saggy it loses its spring back goes out of shape and becomes uncomfortable the other thing about gel is it's heavy so your whole seat will be heavier now if you're into time trialing or triathlons and that um, you can get specifically made seats you're going to be sitting on the nose more and you can get some seats which have got more padding 
or more depth in the padding, uh, different density on the nose area where you'll be sitting. Uh, one seat is called Azotto, specifically made for that, so you might like to look that one up. Looking at the cover of our saddles, there's two sorts, synthetic or leather. They can be slippery or they can be grabby. Some people like slippery and others like to stay in one spot. Personally, I think it's nice to have a bit of both. Uh, so you lift your weight off, move to the position you want and then sit down and it stay, you stay where you are. So to tell a saddle like that is you just get your hand or your fingers and if it feels slippery, that's good. But when you put a bit of pressure on, it grabs. So that's a good way to tell. Now, synthetic uh, covers are water resistant or waterproof and they're lighter than leather as well. But the leather, you'll find out leather seats are very hard initially. They take a long time to break in, but once they're broken into your shape, then they're going to fit like a glove. So they're nice in that respect. But the downside of leather is in the wet weather, uh, when they get wet, they get soaked and they're very cold. The other thing is when they do stretch over time, you need to adjust the tension of the leather. So there's usually a little adjuster under the nose. You've got a tensioner back up as well as they go. So that's a little bit about covers. Now for the rails of your seat, they're usually made of steel or chromoly or titanium or carbon fibre. Now steel being heavy uh, and cheap to make, it's on your cheaper seats. Then you've got chromoly, which is a bit lighter and just as strong. Um, so that's on your mid-price seats. Then you've got titanium and carbon fibre, and um, they uh, absorb a fair bit of shock. Titanium is very pliable, so very comfortable, and carbon fibre absorbs a lot of shock as well. Um, now, they're very, very light. Carbon fibre would probably be the lightest. This one here, this seat's only about 100 grams. I think I measured it 98 grams for the whole seat. The problem with carbon fibre rails is if you're a heavier rider, I would err on caution not to use carbon fiber because you'll crack the rails very easily. I've cracked quite a few in my lifetime and I'm only 75 kilos, nominally 75, 78. So personally, I choose not to ride carbon fiber, but titanium, chromoly, no problem. So there's a few ups and downs on the rails, seat rails. Just a few final words on the saddle itself. If you're just starting out or coming back to riding after a fair while, off the bike then you might want to go for a saddle that's like this it's quite plush and soft and it's wider than recommended in the charts that we've looked at as well so that sort of saddle and once you get about 500 to 1000 kilometers on the seat then you start getting used to it and then you might want to go to say the next one along which is this sort of thing where it's slightly narrower and less padding so you get less chafing and it's a lighter saddle as well then when you really get on the the more mileage and used to the saddle, then you can go for something really nice if you want to like that, which is very, very light, uh, less padding again, and recommended width on the chart we've looked at. And then, then you'll be right, nice and fast, long distance and no problems. So saddle choice is personal. Don't let anyone choose a saddle for you because only you can feel the saddle. So only you can do the choosing. So time to get out the list and we'll add some more items. This time it's all about the seat. So the first thing was the width. So now you know the width of your seat that you've measured. So write that down, whatever it is, and that'll give you around about a central mark to go by. So if, for instance, it's 145 like me, then you can go down to 143, even down to 140s you'll find comfortable, and the opposite way as well. You might be able to go quite easily up to 150. So that'll give you a good guide to go by. So that's your width first, so write that down. Then the next thing, of course, is your perennial reef channel or cutout. So whether you like a cutout, or you don't like a cutout, or you like just the channel, or maybe you don't need anything at all. So you can write that down. Now there's, of course, different ways, different uh, channels. Some go all the way to the end, all the way to the nose and all the way to the back, and some have cutouts just in the mid area or just the nose area, so you might favour a particular uh, area there on your seat where you want your cutout or channel, or maybe all the way through. And of course then there's different widths of the cutout, so you might find if they're too wide, the cutout, you don't like it, 
or maybe you do like it wider and you need it for that reason so who knows it's up to you of course to do the test writing in that so write down that all about your relief channel so it's more about notes note taking on your perennial relief channel because there's so many different variations the other thing is the edging some of the edging can be quite sharp on the perennial relief you might find that the width is right but you feel the edging so you might want a softer roll off on the edging on the cutout so there you go there's some things to write down on the perennial relief system next is the two profiles of your seat that way and then that way first of all that way you can get more of a flat shell or you can get more of a rounded shell with the flat ones you'll find you'll get more contact area more surface area to sit on but on the edges they roll off really quick with the rounder seats, of course, it give you a bit more movement sideways if you need that. But you find with the round shape where it heals up in the middle, you might find the middle, you'll feel the middle a bit more. Up to you, of course, with your personal preference there. Now with this way, you've got either that S shape or you've got the dead flat shape or anywhere in between. Of course, there's lots of variations there. So if you like sitting more in one position, you might favour a slight S shape. Or if you want to move around a lot, then you might favour more of a flat shape. Next is the nose area, which you'll need to take into consideration, especially if you're in an aero position. So you can get the softer noses, you can get wider or narrower noses, and then you can get the perennial relief channel or not, and you might want that perennial relief channel all the way to the very, very end as well. And the other thing, you can get shorter noses as well. But if for general road riding, uh, the, no, the very end of the nose doesn't really matter so much. It's more sort of three quarters of the way and back that really matters. So that's your nose area. Next is the shell of the seat underneath, which gives your seat the overall shape. Now, some shells are quite flexy. So when you sit on your seat, your weight pushes it down and your effective height from your bottom bracket to up the top of your seat sinks down a little bit. So if you've got a really flexy seat, take, keep that in mind. Sort of acts like a hammock in between those three points. Other shells, like a carbon fibre shell, they uh, hardly move at all, which is probably a good thing, but then they're less comfortable as well, whether they're padded or non-padded. Then you can get, of course, solid leather. Brooks have been making solid leather saddles for as long as I can ever remember. And so they're very, very good, favoured by many. But the most common, of course, is plastic. So it's not a big issue. The main thing really is the shape, of course. Moving on to the rails underneath. Now, it's really a weight versus durability issue. Carbon fibre and titanium being the lightest, especially hollow carbon fibre and titanium rails, versus the durability if you're a heavier rider, you want steel or chromoly rails. So be wary of that. If you're a heavier rider, err away from carbon titanium. Go for something more durable. If you're a light rider, a weight weenie, um, then no, it's no problem. Go for your carbon fibre. Now, with the rails themselves, they come in different shapes as well. Um, normally, they're just a round, standard diameter, which will fit your seat post. But some seat posts come, in, they'll require an overlized or an oversized rail. So be wary of that. If you have a seat post like that, then it's going to limit your options to your seat choice. Next is the height from your rail to the top of your seat here. Some are slightly higher, some are slightly lower profile. And that's going to, again, affect your overall height. So just be wary of that. It may only be a couple of mils, but it can make a big difference to you. The scope of fore and aft, which doesn't really matter so much. It's the length that you can move your seat post along the rails itself. So it's actually this area here, along there. Some are longer and some are shorter, which limits your fore and aft scope, how much you can move it back and forth. But of course, we're not going to be having our seat post right at the front or way at the back anyway. So we're aiming for a midpoint along the rails. So it shouldn't really make a big difference. Right, so that's your rails. So write down anything you need to know about your rails. If you're really light, carbon fibre. Next is padding. Is it soft or is it firm? Is it deep padding or is it shallow padding? Or is there no padding at all? So remember, soft does not necessarily mean comfort. If you're just starting out, of course, then yep, err on the soft side. And of course, as you ride more miles, you'll want a more firmer saddle. And of course, then you get those, if you can handle it, with no padding. Of course, if you can handle it, well and good. But the only advantage is you'll save weight. Then there's the cover on your seat. It's usually leather or synthetic these days. Leather's been around for a long time and it's still a great material to put on a bike seat. And it breathes as well. Mind you, synthetics are coming up some great synthetics these days as well. 
and they are good on the seat because they're very light, waterproof, and now they're getting them to breathe as well. Then of course you've got the, this cover, you don't want it too slippery and you don't want it too grippy as well, unless you're after that specifically, get one that has a little bit of a grip and a little bit of a slip as well. So there's your cover. Then lastly, you've got your transition curve here. Remember, there's either shallow or there's a sharp curve. So you'll find out usually over time as you ride, or if you need to consider the transition curve, what sort you'll favour or you need. But if it doesn't matter, well, then it doesn't matter. You can write, it doesn't matter. But you'll find out over time. So that's just the last thing to consider there with your saddle. So now you have a complete list of what to look for when you're saddle hunting. Keep it in a safe place, and over time you might want to make some small tweaks to it as well. So for instance, if you're in a bike shop, take that list with you so you don't forget your personal criteria. Or you don't persuade yourself into buying a saddle that looks so good, but won't be good when you ride it. Now watch the third video, the ride. Don't forget to take your Allen key.